Hello friends, this video on sound part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly look at some of the questions. Sound can travel through gases only, solids only, liquids only, solids, liquids and gases. Now we saw that sound always needs a medium to propagate. Now that medium could be a solid or a liquid or a gas. So it can actually travel through all of these. But what it cannot travel through is vacuum because vacuum would mean there is no matter inside it and sound needs some particles in the medium. Question number two, which of the following voices is likely to have minimum frequency? Baby girl, baby boy, a man, a woman. Now when we talk about frequency, frequency is associated with pitch of the sound. So higher the frequency, higher would be the pitch of the sound. And what is pitch? Pitch is nothing but shrillness in the voice. Lower the frequency, lower would be the pitch or low, lesser would be the shrillness in the voice. Now if you look, compare the sound of a male and a female, so female always has a higher pitch. The voice is more shrill in case of a female when compared to a male. So in this case, where do you have minimum frequency? Minimum frequency means lesser pitch. So the lesser pitch would be in case of a male, that is a man. Now you might ask why not a baby boy because you would have seen that for babies their voice have, are more shrill. Now especially in case of boys as they grow, when they tend to become mature, when they enter into their teenage, their voice changes. So earlier when they are kids, their voices are like more shrill but later they become rough and hoarse. So that's how their shrillness keeps on decreasing as they grow old. In the following statements, tick T against those which are true and F against those which are false. Sound cannot travel through vacuum. Yes, that is absolutely true because sound can travel in, uh, it needs a medium to propagate. Number of oscillations per second of a vibrating object is called its time period. No, not at all. This is false. So what is number of, what is time period? Time period is the time taken to complete one oscillation. And the number of oscillations which takes place that is termed as frequency. So number of oscillation is frequency and time period is the time taken to complete one oscillation. If amplitude is large, sound is feeble. No, this is again false. Why? Because when amplitude loudness is directly proportional to the square of amplitude. So if amplitude is large, in that case the sound should be loud. But here it says it is feeble. So the sentence is false. For human ears, the audible range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Yes, that is correct. So anything below this is uh, infrasound and anything above this is ultrasound. The lower the frequency of a vi vibration, the higher the pitch. Again, this is false. That is because pitch is again directly proportional to frequency. So if frequency is high, pitch will be high. Unwanted or unpleasant sound is termed as music. Of course, this is false because anything which is unwanted and unpleasant that is termed as noise and not music because music is something which is pleasant to hear. Noise pollution may cause partial hearing impairment. Yes, of course it can because the presence of excessive noise can actually cause a lot of stress. It can affect the eardrum and if the eardrum gets impacted, then hearing can also get impacted. Question number four. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Time taken by an object to complete one oscillation is called time period. Loudness is determined by dash of vibration. I, I have always always said that loudness is always dependent on amplitude. So it loudness is proportional to the square of amplitude. Unit of frequency is hertz, which is denoted as Hz. Unwanted sound is called noise. 
shrillness of a sound is determined by the dash of vibration what is shrillness shrillness is nothing by but pitch so pitch is dependent on frequency of vibration question number 5 a pendulum oscillates 40 times in 4 seconds find its time period and frequency okay so let us see uh, what it is trying to say so let us suppose you have a pendulum like this which is oscillating 40 times in 4 seconds so how many number of oscillations is 40 times right so basically we can say that frequency is 40 frequency is nothing but number of oscillations correct per unit time so that is frequency so this is frequency and in how much time it is oscillating 40 times that is 4 seconds. So we will have to find out the time period for one oscillation. So what is time period? Time period is nothing but time taken for one oscillation. Right. So for 40 oscillations. So here you can see for 40 oscillations the time taken is 4 seconds. Therefore, for one oscillation, the time taken would be 4 by 40 seconds, which is nothing but 0 0.1 seconds. So, 0 0.1 second is going to be the time period. So, time period is equal to 0 0.1 seconds. So, how do you find frequency? Frequency, which we normally denote as nu, is nothing but 1 by t. So, here it comes out as 1 by 0 0.1 so this will become the frequency of this pendulum thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again